From the shores of the shimmering sun-kissed waters, hugging this richly historic campus on three sides, through the chiming four-faced clock tower above the university chapel, and through the deepest liberating boughs of the Emancipation Oak, we welcome you to Hampton University, our home by the sea, for the 150th and 151st commencement ceremonies. Celebrating four decades of vision, leadership, and dedication, Hamptonians, family, and friends, please welcome the president of Hampton University, Dr. William R. Harvey. Good morning. On behalf of the trustees, the administration, the faculty, and graduating seniors, I welcome you to this 150th and 151st commencement at Hampton University. I know that everyone joining us virtually is excited to celebrate the achievements of our graduates. The university truly understands the importance of graduation and the excitement surrounding the culmination of your academic studies. Commencement is one of the university's most treasured traditions. And we are saddened that we are unable to host an in-person ceremony as a result of the risks associated with COVID-19. Please know that the Infectious Disease and Prevention Working Group and the Committee on Ceremonial, Ceremonial Occasions thoroughly reviewed the numerous possibilities for hosting an in-person event. They wanted it to be safe for everyone. And what they did was to follow the current guidelines pertaining to graduations by our governor, Governor Northern. After much research and lengthy discussions, we determined that the best option was to host the 2020 and 2021 commencement exercise virtually as we continue our efforts to maintain a healthy and a safe campus. To combat the spread of COVID-19 on our campus, we have followed the guidelines of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as Virginia Department of Health. We have, as examples, instituted temperature checks at entrances to high traffic buildings, installed plexiglass dividers, and placed hand sanitizing stations and social distancing signages across the campus. The university has weekly COVID-19 testing by our health department for all university employees and many members of the campus community have been fully vaccinated. Compared to other institutions of higher education, not only in this state, but across the nation, our positive rate is extremely low. Housing the 2020 and 2021 ceremonies virtually is another attempt for Hampton to continue its policy of using an abundance of caution to keep students, faculty, and staff safe and healthy. In honor of the graduating classes of 2020 and 2021, I pay tribute today to your many achievements and extend to you our very best wishes as you continue your quest for personal and professional fulfillment. 
I also extend to each of you my sincere congratulations. Those of you celebrating this event with us bring honor to the, member, the members of these graduating classes and indeed to Hampton University itself. Therefore, in addition to my greetings, I add my thanks for sharing with us this most significant occasion. At this time, I take pleasure in introducing the distinguished members of the dais. On my left, Dr. Joanne Haysbert, Chancellor and Provost. On my right, uh, the Reverend uh, Dr. Deborah Hagens, the University Chaplain. Now, I would just like to recognize the members of the Board of Trustees, our alumni, elected officials, and other distinguished guests who have joined us for this virtual event. I would like to give special recognition to the parents of our graduating seniors who are witnessing with pride and joy another milestone in the life of your son or daughter. We celebrate all parents and thank you for your support. At Hampton, from our very beginning, we embrace the concept of family. Therefore, I would like to also acknowledge all grandparents and great-grandparents of our graduates. I want you to know that it is an honor to have you with us virtually. Today, we celebrate Mother's Day. Therefore, let us all remember to thank our mothers who have nurtured and guided us throughout our lives. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers in our virtual audience. The greatest measure, in my judgment, of any educational institution is its faculty. Hampton's faculty is comprised of the most talented and dedicated teachers, researchers, and scholars to be found at any college or university, anywhere. My personal thanks to the faculty for all that you do for Hampton. This university prides itself in providing its students with an education for life. The knowledge and skills gained during their tenure at Hampton have enlightened and prepared them to be creators of original ideas, champions of change, and conquerors of new territories in liberal arts, in education, math, science, politics, and technology. You, the classes of 2020 and 2021, will be instrumental in moving our nation and our world forward. I want you to know that the years ahead hold many challenges for all institutions of higher education. But all indicators point to the continued prosperity of Hampton University as a major entity of this enterprise. And because of the classes of 2020 and 2021, our faculty, staff, alumni, friends, and supporters who have a strong commitment to excellence, this university will continue to move forward with boldness for generations to come. We will now have our invocation. Good morning. Please bow with me for the invocation. Our Father and our God, we welcome your presence into this virtual space. It is a space set aside for graduating students who started this journey just a few years ago, 
only to reach this moment with determination and perseverance. It is the prophet Jeremiah who reminds us of this blessed assurance, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not evil, plans to give you a hope and a future. Lord, we thank you for this occasion which points to great hopes and exciting futures. Magnificent are the works of your hands, almighty God. Thank you for accomplished students and proud parents, students ready and prepared to make great contributions to a world filled with awe and wonder amid enormous challenges. However, we are confident that the Hampton University graduate is prepared and the Hampton University graduate is ready. Bless us now as we proceed in this academic rite of passage. In your name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Thank you very much, Dr. Higgins. Now, for me, uh, this is a very special part of today's program. Annually, the university recognizes a few graduates by presenting them with the highest awards that their alma mater can bestow. Recommendations for these awards come from a variety of sources with the selection made by the university's administrative council. Now at this time, I have the pleasure of presenting the 2020 Alumnus at Large Award to Dr. Miriam Graddick Ware for distinguished service to her profession, to her community, and to Hampton University. Dr. Miriam, Graddick Ware, earned the bachelor's degree from Hampton University. She earned the master's and doctor of philosophy degrees from Penn State University. Currently, Dr. Graddick Ware holds the position of Chairman of Human Resources Policy Association. Prior to accepting this position, she served as the Executive Vice President of Human Resources at one of the largest pharmaceutical companies uh, in the world, Merck. Uh, prior to joining Merck, she served as Executive Vice President of Human Resources and Employment Communications Executive Vice President of Human Resources at AT&T. Dr. Gretick Ware served on the board of Brookings Holdings as an independent director and is chair of their compensation committee and a member of the audit committee. In addition, she serves as an independent director of the brand, the Board of Yums. Dr. Gretick Ware is also a former member of the Hampton University Board of Trustees. Loyal to her alma mater, Dr. Gretick Ware's giving has been very generous over the years. The university appreciates her commitment to giving back to her home by the sea. Therefore, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, students, administrators, and all of Hampton University's alumni, it is with a great deal of respect and profound admiration that I present to Dr. Miriam Gretick Weir, the 2020 Outstanding Alumnus at Large Award. Congratulations. Now, I'd like to present the outstanding alumnus at large for 2021, Attorney Marilyn Kane Gordon. Attorney Marilyn Kane Gordon received a BS degree in finance from Hampton University and a Juris Doctorate from the Howard University School of Law a solo practitioner in Washington, D.C. She practices in the areas of employment and labor law, bankruptcy law, and elder law. With over 36 years of experience in litigation, she has been counsel on many matters in both state and federal courts. Some of her major cases include serving as co-counsel and litigation major federal sector employment discrimination class action suits against the United States Postal Service. The cases were brought forth 
on behalf of a nationwide class of U.S. Postal Service employees under the American for Disabilities Act for individuals who were placed in rehabilitation positions after being injured on the job. One of the cases resulted in the largest recovery in a disability employment case ever. Committed to her alma mater, Attorney Gordon was responsible for establishing an endowed scholarship for students with disabilities in the amount of $600,000. The funds were applied per Attorney Gordon's wishes from a disability class action lawsuit on which she served as the co Council. The gift includes funds for an endowed scholarship for disabled students, funds to establish an operating fund for the university's Office of Testing, Compliance, and Disability Services, and funds for current youth scholarships for students with financial difficulties. Therefore, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, students, administrators, and all Hampton University alumni. It is with great pleasure and respect that I present to Attorney Marilyn Kane Gordon, the 2021 Outstanding Alumnus at Large Award. Congratulations. It is my pleasure at this point in the program to recognize the graduating seniors with the two highest grade point averages. At Hampton University, the standard of academic excellence is paramount, and we take advantage at every opportunity to acknowledge it. And certainly, no occasion is more fitting than this one. These seniors, whom I'm about to present to you, have indeed carried the standard to its pinnacle and thus are deserving of our collective congratulations and adulation. The salutatorian, the salutatorian of the class of 2020 with the second highest grade point average is Mrs. Arayana Harris. Arayana is a psychology major from Richmond, Virginia. She graduated with a grade point average of 4.051. Now I'm very pleased to announce to you the valedictorian of the Hampton University class of 2020. That person is Mr. Philippe uh, Stay Van Week. Philippe is a psychology major from Croatia. He graduates with a grade point average of 4.054, the highest among the 2020 graduates. Late in the program, you will hear from the two graduating seniors with the highest grade point averages in the class of 2021, Ms. Cassie Herring and Ms. Brittany Mallon. Each year, for the last three decades, students and faculty of Hampton University have nominated the Edward L. Ham Senior Distinguished Teaching Award. Faculty members who, in their opinion, are outstanding teachers. Members of the Administrative Council review these nominees and make their recommendations to the president for a selection. This award recognizing faculty who consistently attain the lofty height of teaching excellence by extending their instruction beyond the classroom into the activities of their students' world. And in doing so, inspire in them a zeal for learning and a commitment to excellence. The recipient of the Edward L. Ham Senior Distinguished Teaching Award for 2020-2021 is Dr. Al Kish Punjabi. Accompanying this award is an honorarium of $500, which is to be used at the faculty member's discretion to further their professional, intellectual, and cultural 
development. Congratulations, Dr. Punjabi. Ladies and gentlemen, Emmy Award-winning gospel recording artist, Ernest Pugh. Congratulations to Hampton University's graduating classes of 2020 and 2021. You, ladies and gentlemen, will go down in history as the graduating class of resilience. You endured three global pandemics at one time, that of economics, that of the social and racial divide, as well as the public health concern called COVID-19. But you still persevered, which brought you to this place that you are right now. So with your faith on steroids, nothing shall be impossible for you. My prayer today is that God would reign on every desire, every aspiration, and every dream that is inside of you. Now let this song reign on you and be your theme in life. God bless you. Let your glory fill this place. You're all consuming fire. Fill this tabernacle and purify our hearts. Surround us in this place. Want you to breathe, breathe new life within us. Send a refresh. Purify our heart, let your glory, let your glory fill this place. Let your all consume, let your all consume fire, fire. feel. We want them to do it today. Now. Yes, purify, purify our hearts. Surround us in this place. Surround us in this place. Lord, breathe new life. Oh, within us, yes. Oh, yeah. I need all the graduates to sing lead with me right here. Tell them to rain on us. Lord, breathe on us. Oh, shower down. Shower down. Send your spirit. Oh. Shower down, send your spirit, let your glory, let your all, all consuming fire. He's going to do it even as you ask him for it. Purify. Yeah, yeah. 
Just believe it and receive it and believe it and receive it. It's yours for the asking. Yours for the asking. Hey, hey, hey. He's going to rain down his favor. Favor is falling. Lift your hands and receive. Lift your hands and receive. Oh. yours for the asking today. Every dream and every aspiration, it shall come to pass, shall come to pass. Oh, send your rain. God bless you. Now it gives me <clears throat> great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Ms. Rashida Jones, who earned the Bachelor of Arts degree in Mass Media Arts from Hampton University. Ms. Jones has recently been promoted to the distinguished position as president of MSNBC. She is responsible for oversight of all programming, editorial units, business development, and technical operations. Congratulations, Madam President. I want you to know your president and all of us are extremely proud of you. Proud of taking on the role of president in February of 2021, Ms. Jones served as Senior Vice President, NBC News and MSNBC. In this position, she spearheaded cross-platform breaking news and major events for both networks, including the coverage of the coronavirus pandemic and the network's decision 2020 coverage, including presidential debates, town halls, primaries, forums, and special election nights. An Emmy Award winner and the executive producer of the most watched Democratic presidential debate in history during the 2020 election cycle, she also led MSNBC's Dayside and Weekend News programming, where she managed hours of live reporting and news gathering backed by the journalism of NBC News. Before joining MSNBC in 20. 13, Ms. Jones was a news director for the NBC affiliate in Columbia, South Carolina, where she rebuilt and rebranded uh, re the, the news team to focus on deep investigative reporting. The station was number one in their market. She also served as director of programming at the Weather Channel leading coverage and content for some of the network's most historic weather events, including Hurricane Katrina, mass tornado outbreaks, and devastating snow storms. In 2019, Ms. Jones was inducted into the Hampton University Scripps Howard Journalism Hall of Fame, an honor acknowledged for her outstanding work in the journalism industry. She is an ambassador for the Alliance for Women in Media, a board member of the Carol Nealon Project for Responsible Journalism, a member of the Academy of Arts and Sciences, and the National Association of Black Journalists. In 2020, she was, na she was named in Variety's New York Women's Impact Report and 37 New Yorkers making an impact um, in entertainment, entertainment list. Ms. Jones is a mother of two. She currently lives in New Jersey with her family. Please join me in welcoming back to our home by the sea, our 2020 and 2021 commencement speaker, a true Hamptonian who has let her life do the singing. Please welcome Ms. Rashida Jones.
Hello Hampton, it is my honor to share a virtual stage with you. Thank you to the remarkable Dr. William R. Harvey for that wonderful introduction. Believe it or not, Dr. Harvey was already 20 years into his tenure as this university's president back when I first arrived at Hampton. He has dedicated more than four decades of his life to transforming a small Virginia institute into this globally recognized powerhouse of excellence we know and love. Today, you might have the distinction of being one of the last classes to graduate under Dr. Harvey's watch, but I am certain that generations of pirates will continue to benefit from the legacy of his leadership. But today, we are here to celebrate you, the classes of 2020 and 2021. Congratulations to every single one of you and to the families and loved ones who have been cheering you on the entire way, especially all of the mothers on this extra special Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mrs. Fisher. And congratulations to all of you. Graduating from college is a big achievement. Graduating from Hampton, that's an even bigger deal. And graduating during a global pandemic, that's next level. I know that a virtual commencement wasn't what you hoped for. You're missing out on your moment to finally cross Ogden Circle. Even more importantly, you're missing out on the chance to be with your closest friends today to give each other Hampton hugs and high fives and take pictures in caps and gowns. And that's hard. There's no sugarcoating that. Look, nothing about the past year has been easy or expected. But it isn't all bad either. This weird year has thrown some important lessons at you, lessons that most people don't get the opportunity, yes, the opportunity to learn this early on. And there are two lessons in particular worth honing in on because as one of your classmates astutely said to me, this won't be the last or the worst hardship you'll experience. For starters, things often don't go the way you expect. You don't always get what you want. The world can turn upside down really quickly. But with that comes the second lesson. Even when your plan goes out the window, the opportunity for greatness doesn't go away. It just might look a little different. I'll tell you what I mean. Since the first line of any commencement speaker's job description is to talk about how old they are, let me tell you how, as a young journalism student, I used to drive around town in a rickety old Chevy, listening to Lauren Hill, on a cassette tape. Yes, I was still listening to tapes in the 2000s. The car radio didn't work. It's what I had. But that meant, while I was driving home from my first local TV station in Norfolk, WTKR, on the morning of 9-11, I almost missed the biggest news story of my young life as it was happening. There was no Twitter yet. My version of a push notification was a call from my mom's landline as the story was unfolding and I was resting from the overnight shift before my classes started for the day. I immediately went into journalist mode, even if I missed the first leg of the story. I immediately drove back to the studio, started producing hours of coverage. I remember as a college student sleeping on the floor of an edit booth, edit booth number one beside the assignment desk so I could help at all hours of the day and night. But today, 20 years later, what I remember most about that day was feeling the new weight of responsibility that comes from covering the news. I started to see journalism as the public service it is. I started to see the future of my life beginning to emerge. I saw how valuable it was to pursue truth and tell stories that needed to be told, which I still do today. I know you're way too young to remember what that day was like. But you will remember what it was like to be a young black person, not only living through, but in fact leading a nationwide reckoning on race. You'll remember how a pandemic took a disproportionate toll on people who look like us. And I'm sure you'll remember all the sadness and uncertainty of a messed up senior year. But I hope you'll also look back at this as the time when you discover what gets you inspired or outraged or whatever it is inside of you that drives you forward. Because whatever you're going to do with the next 5, 10, or even 40 years of your life, it's got to be something you believe in and you're passionate about. Believe me, no one would ever go into media if it wasn't their true passion, especially with the insane demands of a nonstop news cycle, and it's not like people become journalists for money. People in our profession often have to get up before dawn, we're glued to our phones because a story could break at any moment. So I certainly wouldn't have lasted this long or made it this far in my career if I didn't fully believe that what I do is important. And the same is true in fields like engineering, education, nursing, and many others. 
Now, I realize finding a job, let alone the one you're passionate about, feels uniquely difficult right now. And let me be real with you. You're not necessarily going to land the big one tomorrow. My own first job was ripping scripts, as we called it, and running a teleprompter. So look at this strange, uncertain moment in time, not as a disadvantage, but as a chance to find the right path for you. And I do have one piece of good news. You won't be the only one walking that path. You've got all the other graduates watching right now and every single Hampton alumni who has blazed a trail ahead of you. In the years since I graduated, I've really come to appreciate what a privilege it is to have a lifetime membership to the Hampton community. And I promise you, this community will have your back through whatever life throws your way next. They have certainly had mine. When I moved into Virginia Cleveland Hall at 17 years old, I had spent most of my life in small towns, where my sister, brother, and I were often the only black people in our classes. Everybody knew us, the Atkins kids. I didn't have the same kind of connections or resources that a lot of my New Hampton classmates did. But that began to change almost from the moment I set foot on campus. I first met Barbara Sierra in my freshman English class. She was the most mature student in the class and had a son close to our age. And when our teacher assigned a group project, I latched on to Barbara. Well, it turns out Barbara was and is a very popular local news anchor right here in the 757. She had the job in the industry I had been dreaming about since I was in the third grade. A few years later, she helped me to get my first job in broadcast news. And to this day, Barbara is still one of my first three calls when I need advice or when something amazing happens in my career. And amazing things have happened. I am very proudly the first black woman running a major news network. And it is in no small part because Hampton taught me the importance of finding and fostering connections. All these years later, I still text the same group of friends I made in the Convocation Center my first week of freshman year. We check in nearly every day, sharing what our kids are up to and in normal years, making plans for the next homecoming. I also met my life partner right here on this campus. And since that freshman English class, I've made a habit out of reaching out to people with interesting skills and life experiences who see things differently than me, who have been successful in a whole variety of ways. Yvette Miley at NBC is one of those people. Eight years ago, I was a local news director in Columbia, South Carolina. Yvette called me up and offered me a chance to be an executive producer in New York City. It was a big career and personal jump for me. I had kids, I had friends in South Carolina, I had a life I loved, I'm a Southern gal, so it was a tough decision for me. Ultimately, I knew I had to take the risk, and when I got to NBC, Yvette pushed me like no one had ever pushed me before. I remember saying to her, Yvette, you are harder on me than anyone else in this building. And she said, it's because you have potential. And you know what, if I didn't have somebody who I knew had my back, but who always was going to challenge me, who would say to me, why not go after the bigger job? Why not go after the bigger thing? I don't know that I would have had the confidence to raise my hand. Everyone needs an Yvette. Everyone needs a Barbara. And someday when you have the chance to pay it forward, every one of you should be an Yvette. Every one of you should be a Barbara. You've been given so many gifts here at Hampton. You leave here knowing how to carry yourself with confidence, how to prepare like no one else in the room, how to instill a level of black excellence in everything you do. I spoke with a group of you a couple of weeks ago, and you all showed up to our Zoom in your suits, and you showed up early. That's because that's what Hampton students do. We learned that from our very first semester on campus in University 101. But the truth is, most people don't ever get that kind of education. For the rest of our lives, we have the responsibility to represent our shared standard of excellence because we are forever part of something much bigger than ourselves. Maybe that means reaching out to mentor a Hampton student in a few years. Maybe that means coming back to homecoming or contributing to the endowment. For me, that meant setting up an annual scholarship fund here at Hampton to train the next generation of journalists at the Scripps Howard School of Journalism and Communications. And I'll be honest, there's a lot of good we can do just by being an example of everything we've learned at Hampton. I know that just by showing up to work every day, I get to help change people's perceptions of what a leader looks like. No one else at the top of a major news network has ever looked like me before. And every time I zoom into an editorial meeting, my 12-year-old daughter gets to see someone who looks like her, literally, because we're basically twins, as the boss. My 12-year-old son gets to see a black woman in a position of real power. 
My coworkers get to do their jobs to the best of their ability without worrying about how some old guys in the C-suite see them and treat them. And the whole country gets to feel the effects of what it means not just to have a young woman, but a woman of color, a mom, a proud HBCU graduate, make decisions on how to deliver and analyze the news. Because shame on me if I'm not bringing my entire life experience to the conversation. My job is to be a living, breathing showcase for what's possible. I have a photo of Emancipation Oak hanging in my office to remind me of that every day. And now, classes of 2020 and 2021, it is your job too. Hampton has trained you to be the next generation of leaders, future CEOs, doctors, and lawyers, to be great in whatever you do. But true greatness can never be achieved alone. And however you make your mark on the world, don't just remember who helped you on the way there. Remember who you're blazing a path for. You can change someone's trajectory just by embodying what you learned at Hampton. You can change what they think is possible. And I can't think of anything more rewarding than that. Congratulations to the classes of 2020 and 2021, and welcome to your next chapter as Hampton alumni. Keep making us proud. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ms. Jones, for those very encouraging words. You have truly allowed your life to do the singing. The Hampton University family thanks you for your continued support. At this time, I would like to recognize the accomplishments of all of our 2020 and 2021 graduates from the following schools. The James T. George School of Business, the School of Engineering and Technology, the Scripps Howard School of Journalism and Communications, the School of Liberal Arts and Education, the School of Nursing, the School of Pharmacy, the School of Science, the College of Virginia Beach, the Freddie T. Davey Honor, Honors College, the William R. Harvey Leadership Institute, University College, and the Graduate College. Your degrees will now be conferred. Will all undergraduates, classes of 2020 and 2021, please don your hoods. Mr. President, I have the honor to present the candidates whose names appear on their approved list who have met or proposed to meet all the requirements for the degrees of Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Science in their respective schools. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hampton University and by the Commonwealth of Virginia. I now confer upon you the degrees of Associate of Art, Associate of Science, Bachelor of Art, and Bachelor of Science with all of the rights and pr privileges pertaining thereto. In testimony whereupon, the seal of the university has been affixed. For well, all undergraduates, class of 2020 and 2021, move your tassels to the left. <laughs> Congratulations. Will the master's degree 
and specialists in education degree candidates, please don your hoods. Mr. President, I have the honor to present the candidates whose name appear on the approved list and who have met all the requirements for the degrees of Master of Architecture, Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Science, Master in Teaching, and Specialist in Education. By virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees of Hampton University and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I now confer upon you the degrees of Master of Architecture, Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Science, Master in Teaching, and Specialist in Education, with all of the rights, privileges, and honors pertaining thereto. In testimony whereupon the seal of the university has been affixed. Congratulations. Will the doctoral candidates please stand and don your hoods. <clears throat> Mr. President, I have the honor to present the candidates whose names appear on the approved list and who have met all the requirements for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy in Atmospheric Science, the Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration, the Doctor of Philosophy in Counseling Education and Supervision, the Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Management, the Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing, the Doctor of Philosophy in Physics, the Doctor of Pharmacy, the Doctor of Philosophy in Planetary Science, and the Doctor of Physical Therapy. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hampton University and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I now confer upon you the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy in Atmospheric Science, Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration, the Doctor of Philosophy in Counseling Education and Supervision, the Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Management, the Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing, the Doctor of Philosophy in Physics, the Doctor of Pharmacy, the Doctor of Philosophy in Planetary Science, and the Doctor of Physical Therapy, respectively, with all of the rights, privileges, honors pertaining thereto, in testimony whereupon the seal of the university has been affixed. My sincere congratulations. Now, let me say some departing words to those of you that are graduating from these hallowed grounds. I want you to know that graduates of 2020 and 2021, I am proud of you. Proud because as your president, I celebrate your accomplishments. It is now your responsibility to determine the kind of life that you will lead and to create a place for yourself in this ever-changing world. And at this time, I challenge you, each in your own way, to allow your academic experiences at Hampton to serve as a foundation upon which you build productive careers. Allow your social interaction with family, staff, administrators, and your fellow students to guide you as you interact with individuals in the workplace and in society. And allow the university's commitment to you to be a model for your commitment back to yourself 
your family, your community, and your alma mater. It is my desire for you to live richly, richly satisfying, personalized, filled with love, filled with laughter, to find ways to make your community a better place for yourselves, your family, and your neighbors, and to grow and continue learning for the rest of your lives. Remember, Hampton graduates, you are conquerors, and you have the courage and the strength to overcome every obstacle set before you. Graduates, during some extremely challenging times, each of you has successfully completed multiple years of rigorous training and skill development to earn your place at this ceremony. The regalia that you're wearing, the traditions we are observing, attest to your proven readiness for success. You have done well. Now you have a different job to do, for the greatest things have not been done. The greatest picture has not been painted. The greatest book has not been written. The greatest song is yet unsung. There is a job for you. A graduating classes of 2020 and 2021 in every single occupation known to man. It is your responsibility to make something happen. My charge to you, our cherished graduates, is to see the horizon not as a limit, but as an invitation. The torch has been passed to you with the expectation that you will hold it higher and carry it farther than those who walked before you. My solemn hope and greatest wish as you depart your home by the sea is that you do for the world what your alma mater has done for you. Impart knowledge, share wisdom, nurture and guide, and maintain the highest ethical standards in all that you do. Be true to yourselves and hone that truth in others. I urge you to do several other things. Pay yourself First, saving something, I don't care how small it is, from every paycheck, and buy some property. Why? Because property appreciates. That new car will not. It will depreciate when you roll it out of the storeroom window. Thirdly, stay away from drugs and drug dealers. If, if they do not destroy your life, I promise you they will make it miserable. And as I said before, do not be common. Hamptonians aren't common. Do not be ordinary. Anybody can be those things. Hamptonians are not. Remember always to support your alma mater with your positive words, with your resources, and with your prayers. I want you to say to yourselves, I will always support Hampton. I will support Hampton with my words, my deeds, and my treasure. And as you leave our home by the sea, remember, you are responsible for sustaining the legacy of Hampton. That Hampton empire that shines so great now, it's going to be on you. So I now charge you members of Onyx 9 class of 2020 and Ogre um, uh, 17 class of 2021 to be positive role models. Be men and women who are trusted and always speak the truth. Be leaders in your respective fields. In other words, be somebody. Be men and women who value trust, truth, integrity, 
respect, and responsible personal behavior. I congratulate you on what you have already achieved. And I rejoice, for I truly believe that the world will be made better because of the Hampton University classes of 2020 and 2021. The world is waiting for you. Serve it and Hampton well. Now, let's get on with it. To present the response to the charge from our president, here are the top two seniors of the class of 2021, Miss Cassie Herring and Miss Brittany Maiman. Good morning, the President Harvey, our commission speaker, Ms. Rashida Jones, our members of the dais, our faculty and staff, our family and friends, and of course, the one and only class of 2021. Ogres, we did it! I am Brittany Maiman, a graduating senior in the Business Administration Program with a minor in Leadership Studies and a focus in Accounting. I am humbled and honored to represent our class today. All glory goes to God. Thank you, Lord, for being my guiding post through this life journey. Because of his grace, I have achieved the academic success that enables me to speak here today. On behalf of the graduating class of 2021, I would like to thank our professors, faculty, staff, families, and friends for your support up to this point. We could not have made it to this milestone without you. Personally, I would also like to thank the sisters of the Gamma Theta chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Your support means the world to me. As I reflect back on our journey as a class, the one thing we all had in common at one time or another was a fear of the unknown. Whether it was not knowing what to expect as freshmen or not knowing how to deal with the unprecedented challenges of this past year. But we overcame because we are here today. Maya Angelou once said that courage is the most important of all virtues. And I urge us all to think that way. Fighting through our fears builds character and summons courage. So it is okay to be scared. What is most important is how we react to it. As the sixth principle of the William R. Harvey leadership model affirms, reacting with courage enables results. Some of us may be thinking, now what? What is this next courageous step for me to take for my dreams? And I have an answer for you. Psalms 139.16 states, all my days were written in your book. Your purpose has already been written by God, now live it. So I like to end this with a charge. Think about the first thing that comes to mind if you can get a glimpse into that book. Who are you destined to be? Because we're all destined to be somebody great. Is it to be a doctor, a lawyer, lead a nonprofit, be an entrepreneur? What courageous step would you need to take to be that person? For me, it was preparing to take the CPA exam. So what are you nervously motivated to do that will help launch yourself into the success Hampton has prepared us for? There's no dream too big and there's no goal too small. Whatever road you take, remember to do it with this legacy. The legacy of being a proud Hamptonian that sets the standard of excellence no matter where we go. We have already made it this far and this is only the beginning. Congratulations, OPIO 17. We made it. To our president, Dr. William R. Harvey, our commencement speaker, Ms. Rashida Jones, members of the dais, faculty, staff, family, friends, and Ogre Phi Ogre 17, the graduating class of 2021, good morning. My name is Cassie Herring, and I am honored to be addressing you today. I would like to start by thanking the one who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. Thank God for bringing us through every trial, delivering us safely to this moment. I would also like to extend a thank you to our families for all of their love and support. Lastly, I want to say thank you to the professors, faculty, and staff who nurtured us throughout this journey. To you, we are forever grateful, and for you, we thank God. We have all heard it said before, we are enduring two pandemics, one being the coronavirus and the other being racism. Yet we stand here today, rising above it all and making history. But to me, this is not surprising because if I know anything about my class, I know that we are resilient. When fires start, we make beauty with the ashes. I remember a freshman year, the power went out across campus. And instead of sitting in the darkness, we made our way outside, playing music and laughing under a starlit sky. When Hurricane Florence caused us to evacuate in 2018, we called it a hurricane and continued to smile. When the pandemic cut our junior year short, we band together 
and learn to navigate a new normal on Blackboard. Now, as seniors graduating in our living rooms, we have made beauty out of this too. I was recently reminded of the quote, to get something you've never had, you have to do something you have never done. I want to encourage my fellow ogres to do what has never been done. Blaze your own trail. Infuse everything you do with kindness. Walk with purpose and remember on whose shoulders you stand. But above all, dream with reckless abandon and let nothing stand in your way. We have been through so much, but the class of strength, of creativity, and of absolute excellence can promise you this. For all the doors they slammed on us, we are coming to buy the building. Congratulations to the greatest class of them all. Upon completion of their studies, each graduate joins a distinguished group of alumni. Here to induct our graduates into this prestigious group is the president of the National Hampton Alumni Association, Ms. Gina Pemberton. First, let me say congratulations to the class of 2021. Please repeat after me as I read the Alumni Covenant. We, the class of 2021 graduates of Hampton University, are conscious of our obligation to be both faithful followers and dependable leaders. With all other alumni of Hampton University, we commit ourselves to be worthy sons and daughters of our alma mater, to realize in ourselves her high standards of integrity and competence, to fulfill in our, ourselves her tradition of unselfish service to mankind, to contribute liberally of our energy and our substance to her continued upbuilding and support, and in the days and years that lie ahead, to meet with dignity and fortitude, whatever comes to us personally. And now, please join us in the singing of the Hampton University alma mater, conducted by Professor Omar Dickinson. to keep us all from falling and to present us without fault before his throne with exceeding and overwhelming joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. And as always, God, over your people, let your love, your joy, and your peace, your power, your protection, and your constant provision, your Holy Spirit, your holy anointing, and your holy presence that gives us all so much joy. Father, let it rest. Let it rule and let it abide in the lives of these, your precious believers. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Amen. Good morning. It is with great pleasure 
and pride that I welcome you to the Scripps Howard School of Journalism and Communications 2021 Degree Awarding Ceremony. I am Dean B. DeVita Plummer, and our graduates are true examples of why we say excellence is built here. Excellence of historic proportions, as proven with the appointment of our alumna and commencement speaker, Rashida Jones, as the first person of color, female or male, to lead a major cable news network. You too are on your way, Scrippas, to media greatness, telling stories that need to be heard, investigating, celebrating, promoting, informing, and giving voice to the voiceless. So without further ado, let's begin. I present to you the recipients of the Bachelor of Arts degree in Journalism, the Bachelor of Arts degree in Strategic Communications. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the Scripps Howard School of Journalism and Communications, congratulations to each and every one of you for what you have accomplished. We wish you the very best as you take these next exciting steps along your journey. Thank you.
The live stream has now ended. The appearance of candidates' names in this ceremony should not be considered conclusive evidence of graduation. For more information about Hampton University or to view the ceremony online from the beginning, visit our website at www.hamptonu.edu. Thank you.